When visiting Pompeii, one has the almost religious feeling of witnessing an exhumation. The life of the ancient city seems incredibly close. By petrifying the city in a single blast, Vesuvius performed a paradoxical feat, destroying everything while preserving it for all time. The little city of Heraculaneum suffered the same fate during the eruption, except the city was not buried by cinders, but drowned by a river of mud. Torrential rains washed the cinders that accumulated on the volcanic cone down into the valley. A veritable river of boiling mud swept down Vesuvius, clearing everything in its path, trees, columns, statues, entire walls of homes. Other homes were completely drowned under this mire that seeped into every nook and cranny. A few of Heraculaneum's 5,000 inhabitants had time to flee, but many were killed. As it dried, the volcanic mud hardened, and this baked mud tomb had to be broken to liberate the ruins. Important archaeological remains are still entombed, but are now hard to excavate because the modern city has grown on top of them. The natural conclusion to the visit of these two devastated cities seems to be a trip to the top of Vesuvius. Guided tours were already being organized here in the early 19th. Vesuvius was indeed a forerunner, since the world's first volcanological observatory was founded here in 1841. Vesuvius, being close and accessible, proved to be an excellent observation ground for early volcanologists. Later, men of letters throughout Europe would be swept up in a romantic craze for this fiery mountain. Goethe, Byron, Lamartine, and Chateaubriand all climbed to the crater's rim. On January 5, 1804, the French writer Chateaubriand notes, I left Naples at 7 o'clock in the morning, and am already at Portici. The sun has appeared through the dawn clouds. I bargain with a guide to drive me to the volcano's crater. He provides me with two mules, one for him, one for me. We are leaving. Scorched earth everywhere, naked vines among umbrella-shaped pines, a few aloe veras in hedges, countless boulders, and not one bird. The lava, like slag spewing from a forge, is black and covered with a whitish dross remarkably similar to dried foam. The overall color of the pit is that of extinguished coal. I ponder that a short distance below my feet lies a fiery pit. I imagine that the volcano might open up and throw me into the air with these slabs of shattered marble. Vesuvius's crater has a perfect shape today, but it didn't look like this when it spewed cinders over Pompeii. This crater appeared just afterwards, fitting into the earlier volcanic structure, the Soma, and disfiguring it over time.
day, Vesuvius's crater reaches 1,281 meters in altitude.